everyone, I'm Victoria Fifield. I'm an artist, a writer and a musician. I grew up in Glen Tanner near Aboyne in Aberdeenshire, uh, but I now live in London. So today I'm going to be introducing you to an artwork from the collection at Aberdeen Art Gallery. Uh, it's a piece that I think is really beautiful, but also a little bit mysterious. It's a sculpture by a Japanese artist called Junko Mori, and the title of the piece is A Small Propagation Project. So if you're visiting Aberdeen Art Gallery, you can find this piece in Gallery 5, which is on the ground floor at the back right of the sculpture court. And the sculpture court is the big open area straight ahead of you as you enter the gallery. So to be honest, the first time I saw this piece, I thought, what on earth is that? So let's see what you think. Let's take a look at the artwork. So, what does it remind you of? What do you think inspired the artist to create this artwork? For me, there are several possibilities. Um, it reminds me of a lot of things we see in nature. Uh, for example, could these wavy strands be seaweed waving in the underwater current? Or maybe a spiky sea creature? Could it be something from on dry land like the tangled up roots of a plant that's been wrenched out of the earth. The almost circular shape also makes me think of the petals of a sunflower, or maybe even the rays of the sun itself. And I think the empty space at the centre also gives me some ideas. Maybe it's a bird's nest, and this empty space is a safe place for the bird to keep their eggs. What other ideas have you got? There are no right and wrong answers to what this is. Junko Mori says that she designs all her artworks to evoke a response from the viewer. So it's like she's uh, left the piece a little bit unfinished, leaving you to fill in the blanks. Now in this way, your ideas and those of each person that sees the artwork form part of the final piece. When the artist was at school, guess what her favourite subject was? If you said art, you are wrong. It was science and biology. She really loved learning about the intricate structures of trees and plants and looking at different types of cells under a microscope. And later in her life, this interest developed into an ongoing fascination with microbiology. So what's microbiology? It is the study of all living organisms that are too small to be seen by the naked eye. And microbiologists study microbes, which are tiny living organisms which are all around us. Did you know that in your body there are a trillion microbes? A trillion! That is more than the number of stars in the entire Milky Way galaxy. Crazy! So the most common types of microbes are bacteria, fungi and viruses. Here's a picture of a microbe that you may be familiar with. Do you recognise it? Yeah, it is a cell of the dreaded coronavirus as seen under a microscope. So Junko Mori uses her scientific interests as inspiration for her art. All her sculptures are made of hundreds or thousands of tiny elements and each individual part is made by hand, making it completely unique, just like each tiny cell in your body. Now the title of this artwork is also quite scientific, 
a small propagation project. To me, it sounds more like a biology experiment than an artwork. Uh, now, the word propagation is normally used in relation to plants, and it is the process of creating new plants from seeds or cuttings or other plant parts. Uh, but the word can also be used uh, more generally to mean the spreading or multiplying of anything like the spread of ideas or, of course, viruses. One thing that's quite different from its source of inspiration is the size and scale of the artwork. Now, this sculpture is 12 by 14 centimetres, which is about the size of the body of this pineapple. So it's not huge, but it's still many, many times larger than the tiny microscopic forms that inspire her work. So she has enlarged things that normally humans can't even see, making them big enough for us to see and enjoy. It's like she's translating the language of science into the language of art. So now you know a little bit about Junko Mori and her interests. Do you see the sculpture differently? In part one, we looked at the meanings and inspirations behind Junko Mori's sculpture, A Small Propagation Project. We learned about the artist's interest in nature, science and microbiology. And in this second part, we're going to be looking at the materials that she works with. So let's take another look at the artwork and see if you can tell what it's made from. If you said metal, you're right. Junko Mori uses different types of metal to create her sculptures. Sometimes she uses precious metals like silver, um, but for most of her work she uses steel. This particular sculpture is made from mild steel, which is a type of steel that is relatively easy to work with. Um, you can shape it and mould it without it breaking. Now, if we think about metal in general, what objects come to mind? It makes me think of gates, railings, train tracks, uh, different types of tools like spades or chisels, and also weapons like guns or swords. What else can you think of? Although we're not allowed to touch objects in the art gallery, so they don't get damaged or marked. What do you imagine this sculpture would feel like to touch? Do you think it would be rough or smooth, rigid or flexible? And if you could hold it, do you think it would be quite light or more heavy? To learn how to work with metal, Junko Mori trained as a blacksmith. Now, a blacksmith is someone that makes everyday objects like gates, railings or horseshoes from wrought iron or steel. And from doing this work, uh, Junko Mori learned all sorts of different traditional processes of shaping metal using a hammer and an anvil, which is like a big heavy shaped iron block. So far, uh, there are more men than women that have chosen to work as blacksmiths. However, Junko Mori's love of working with metal outweighed any other concerns. She also worked in a welding factory where they might have made things like metal pipes or parts of cars. And there she learned more industrial methods of metal working, such as joining pieces of metal together by heating them to very high temperatures until they melt into molten liquid. And although she was the only woman in the whole factory, she did not let that stop her. Junko Mori now uses many of the techniques that she learned in these jobs in her art. 
Each individual wavy strand of this sculpture was shaped by hand, hammering it until she was satisfied with its shape. She would then have used a blowtorch to heat and weld the pieces together to create the final arrangement. Can you imagine the sounds coming out of her workshop? The clang of the hammer hitting the anvil over and over again, the fiery whoosh of the blowtorch, and the crackle of sparks as she cuts each individual piece of metal to just the right length. So now we've learned some things about metal and metalwork, let's think again about Junko Mori's inspiration of cells and natural structures. Now, if you had to make a sculpture based on, for example, this leaf, what materials might you use to imitate this? I think I might use thread, possibly lace, or thin paper, but certainly not steel. So there's a big contrast between the subject matter and the material of the sculpture. It's quite unexpected. And by using metal, the artist is telling us something new about these things and making us look at them differently. Maybe she's saying that although these things can seem delicate and small, they're actually very strong. After all, these tiny microbes keep us all alive and work together perfectly to create and maintain our entire ecosystem. So far, we've learnt about Junko Mori's inspirations and interests in nature and microbiology. We've also learnt about the material that she uses to make her sculptures. She uses metal, and in particular, steel. In part three, we're going to be looking at her methods and what it actually takes to make a sculpture like a small propagation project. Let's take another look at the artwork. If we look at just one small section, how many individual pieces of metal do you think there are just in this small section of the sculpture? I counted 38 separate pieces just in this small area. So that means in the whole object, there must be at least 200 of these individual metal strands. If you were to take the sculpture apart and lay out 200 individual pieces side by side, how long do you think that line would be? Even if we laid them quite close together, I reckon the line would be at least two metres long. Each of these pieces have been made by hand from straight steel rods. Junko Mori would have cut each rod to the length she wanted before heating it so that she could hammer it into this wavy shape. She would also have used her hammer to shape the ends into a point by banging the steel rod on each side to flatten it. Imagine you've been given an art project at school and you have to create 200 pieces by hand. Even if you were a fast worker, and could create one every 15 minutes, they would still take you 50 hours. That's almost 10 whole school days. So how do you think it would feel to be doing the same thing over and over again? Enjoyable? Tiring? Boring? It definitely sounds like hard work, but if you think it would be boring, Junko Mori disagrees. 
She says that creating her work in this repetitive way over many, many hours is actually very calming. The word she uses to describe the feeling is meditative. Meditation is a word that we often hear these days. It's well known that finding some time to be still and quiet is good for our minds and also makes us feel calmer and more focused. But you don't need to sit in a weird position or chant um in order to achieve this feeling. Lots of activities are good for this, especially ones that involve doing the same activity over and over again. Some repetitive calming activities that I can think of are colouring in, stirring a pot of something as it cooks, stroking a cat, or swinging backwards and forwards on a swing. There are also lots of sounds that people find calming. And again, these are often regular repeated sounds like waves on a shore, raindrops on a roof, or the ticking of a clock. When something is repeated over and over again, we know what to expect and therefore our minds can relax. Can you think of a sound or an activity that makes you feel calm? So this is how Junko Mori feels as she hammers the small pieces of steel over and over for many hours, calm, relaxed, and focused only on the sound and feeling of the hammer on the metal. All other concerns, like what she's going to do later or what's happening on the news, fade away while she's working. So maybe making those 200 pieces might be more enjoyable than you thought.